Hey guys, welcome back for the seventh and for now last episode of the history of crypto art. Let's dive into it. Ten years ago, the launch of LazyCoin. LazyCoin was a conceptual currency with a proof of non-work, intended as a store of non-value. A so-called generator would mine lazy coins for minutes doing absolutely nothing while being verified by a verifier who would subsequently submit a certificate of lazy coins. Each minute of doing nothing would result in a lazy coin. Five years ago, the launch of Crypto Scouts. Developer and artist Alex Slayer launched Crypto Styles as a 10k NFT profile picture project, and with the rise of interest, the co-founders gave away a bunch of skulls they held for long-term development, such as a game. Also five years ago, the Rare Art Festival in its second edition. The crypto and collectible scene came together for a second round of this legendary Rare Art Festival at the Bushwick Generator in Brooklyn. A year later, the virtual Rare Art Festival took place since it was the peak of COVID. This festival shifted into the virtual realm. Three years ago, Christie's auctioned the Andy Warhol's machine-made NFTs. Despite being a blue chip artist and releasing these NFTs after his death, it was overshadowed by the highly controversial upscaling of the original 320 by 200 pixel images. Also three years ago, the launch of Legend Marketplace. Legend is an NFT platform built by artists for artists and was based on the WAX blockchain. Initially released for visual arts, the platform tried to pivot towards movies, music and musicians later on. And BCA Network became MetaOpus. The Chinese crypto art platform BlockCreate Art rebranded its marketplace to MetaOpus, referencing the metaverse and Opus. Also three years ago, Itzelyard or Eggshell sets the 2 million sales record with Dreaming at Dusk. The Panama-born generative artist created this high-selling piece in support of the Tor project and became the highest-selling female in the NFT space. And the last one for this episode, the sole exhibition by Simon Danny called Metaverse Landscapes. The Kunstverein Hanover in Germany showcased his work, which featured a growing landscape of virtual worlds enabled by blockchain technology. Thanks for joining me for the past seven episodes. If you have some feedback, I would appreciate it. I'll be taking a bit of a break and may see some of you at NFC in Lisbon. So if you're there, please stop by and say hi. I'll see you there.